What is going on anyone? I'm Sir James from GamerFusion.com and today I'm here to give you my review for Mugen Soul Z. Now Mugen Soul Z is a continuation in the Mugen Soul series. In this game you begin with Lady Shushu expanding her conquest and making the whole universe hers. In the previous game Shushu's ambition was to conquer the seven worlds representing the hues of the rainbow. In this one Ryoto introduces an upgrade to the G castle and the appearance change which now makes the G castle into a giant robot. However, Shushu was not really impressed with these upgrades and they were able to time space travel moving on to the 12 star galaxy which now she sets to conquer the 12 star galaxy and to reclaim her title as the undisputed god. As for the graphics, visually this game is really bright and colorful. I find that the character model designs and the level designs throughout the game happen to fit the tone of which they're trying to go with quite well. It does have an anime feel to it. There's a lot of random stuff that happens in the game, some off moments, um, but overall it came together quite well and I was really pleased of how everything turned out. And of course one of my other personal favorites is that when you're reading some of the dialogue, you're presented with some concept art that happens to show up in game, which I think is pretty much well done and I think the artist did a fantastic job uh, bringing the game to life. As for the gameplay, you could easily break down the gameplay into two different sections. If you play the original title, then the gameplay is going to be very familiar along with new improvements and new additions. However, if you never played the original title, then it's going to be a little bit confusing at first, but don't worry, the game does a great job explaining uh, the new mechanics into the game and in about 10 to 20 minutes you'll get used to how the combat works. Now the game is basically a turn-based tactical RPG and it has the gameplay style which is very familiar to another title known as Hyper Dimension MK2. But let me go ahead and try to break it down. In the game, in terms of how the combat works, you have a few different options. And of course, you have a wide variety of different characters in which you can use. Uh, each new chapter that you visit in the game will usually pretty much grant you two new characters in which you could use in your roster. Each character is able to wield a variety of different weapons depending on what you put to that character. And of course, is able to learn a variety of different skills as they level up in the game. And of course, you are going to find yourself staying in one planet and basically leveling up as much as you can because the game's difficulty spike tends to rise quite a bit as you progress further into the game. But the way the combat system works is that you turn based and depending on how you get into the combat will either grant you the advantage first in battle or the enemy's going to get the advantage at hand or there's going to be a time where you have you know scripted events like boss fights which the outcome could be pretty much random. Now the way you encounter enemies is uh, about three different ways. One is being that you go up to an enemy and you engage in combat. If you happen to hit the enemy before you reach him, then you're actually going to get an advantage in the beginning of the battle. However, if an enemy happens to sneak up upon you, then they're going to get the advantage in the beginning of the battle as well. The second one is if you fail to meet the requirements to basically seduce the planet in one of three ways. The first one is using your love charm to uh, kind of seduce the planet. The second option is by defeating a specific amount of enemies and as you progress further into the game that's going to increase increase. For example, maybe the first section is to have a total of 30 defeated enemies and while later on you're going to have, okay, you need to have 100 or 500 enemies defeated. So failing that is another option. And the other one is presenting the planet with a specific item. So if you happen to fail those, you're going to get into a pretty much a battle system there. And of course you'll have your scripted events such as boss fights which could be different. Now the way the battle system works is that you have a grid in a way, you have two different circles. The first circle represents your movement of how far your character can move, and the second one is the range of your weapon. Each weapon has its own set range. For example, a spear obviously is able to reach good distances, while cannons and pistols and even arrows are able to get the advantage at long distances, and short swords, well, as it's stated, it's short so it's not going to have a good field of range to attack the enemies. And of course, each character has their own unique skills and abilities, which they can implement in battle. Some may have spell casting skills, others may have to deal with a massive damage towards the enemies, or able to grant, um, I would say, a variety of different hits. For example, like maybe their basic attack only does one or two hits, while one, using one of their special skills may perform a 7 or 20 hit combo, which tends to get crazy the further along you get in the game, so you obviously want to keep leveling up your characters to unlock these new skills and abilities. 
Now, besides that, there's also uh, item shops, and of course, you could also upgrade the looks and desires of your characters in the game, which you basically go back to your main ship, the G-Castle, I should say, and there you have a few different options you could do. You could change the look of your character, uh, which tends to get pretty expensive in terms of currency, and you also have the weapons and item shops, which you could use... Well, in this case, you're going to be stocking up on a lot of items such as healing potions for your team because the difficulty spike in the game tends to rise quite a bit. You could also, because there's so much added into it, it's really hard to explain everything in this review. But, like, the basics is that you could buy a variety of different weapons. There's some weapons in which you can't access quite yet because you need to have the right items in order to craft it. And, of course, along the way, you could also use your gold currency to level up your weapons. Now when you do that it actually increases the weapon stats. For example if you have a weapon equipped where it increases the attack and agility when you perform that upgrade it's uh, you're going to spend gold to upgrade the attack and agility once again and each weapon has its own level cap so maybe you have a weapon that could only go up to level 10 you may have one in the future that could go up to level 30 50 and whatever else and as I stated there's a crafting system so if you happen to meet the requirements for the items you can craft those additional weapons and all that but like I said there's just so much added into the game it's going to be overwhelming at first but as you progress further along it becomes very understandable Sounded really serious. Hey, are you okay? Lady Shushu, what's going on in there? I don't know. A bunch of maidens just came out of nowhere and grabbed onto me. They're all drippy and gooey and squirmy and... No! Gross, gross, gross! Drippy and gooey? Lady Shushu and some slippery, slimy, squirmy... thing. <laughs> Your nose bleeding! Oh, oh dear! Uh, um, we need to wipe up this mess! Forget about him! I'm the one in real trouble here! Hurry up and. Yeah! What's going on? Seriously! Stop! I'm losing all my strength! No! Oh, dang it! That's enough! My nose keeps on getting bloodier! <laughs> There. Hang on, Lady Shushu. I'll save you. Now let me go ahead and talk about the actual sound in the game, starting with the in-game soundtrack. And I gotta say, the soundtrack was really enjoyable to listen to. And my favorite track out of the entire game happens to be the one that plays in the introduction upon starting up the game to play. And now in terms of the actual voice actors, the game does give you two different options. Option number one is that you could choose to use the original Japanese voice actors, or option two is to use the English voice actors. But for the purpose of this review, I'm just going to talk about the English voice actors, because we all know that the jo Japanese vo voice actors do a great job already. But in terms of the English voice actors, that really depends on the game. And I gotta say, I have to give it up to the English voice actors for this game, because they're able to give each of the characters their own unique personalities, and you're able to distinguish each character over another. Uh, but just the overall, like I said, the English voice actors did a really good job playing the role of their prospective characters. So overall, whether you're choosing to play with the Japanese voice actors or the English voice actors, you're going to have a great time no matter what. As for the lifespan, what kind of lifespan do I see for this game? And to be honest, this game has a great lifespan and here's my two reasons why. First off, if you're a fan of the original title, of course you want to come and check out the second one to see if Lady Shushu meets her goals. And of course, this game is also pretty long in terms of an RPG. It's not something that you're going to put like 8 to 10 hours and then you're done beating the game. It's something that's going to take you a while to beat because, you know, like I said, the difficulty spike within the game tends to rise quite a bit with no default difficulty setting whatsoever. It just spikes whenever it feels like it. And you're going to find yourself at times staying on one planet, trying to level up your characters, trying to get new abilities upgrading and crafting your weapons to try to get all the good stuff for the upcoming boss fights. It's just something that's going to drag on quite a bit, but at the same time it's going to be very well rewarding towards the end, especially when you're trying to get all the trophies in the game. That's something that's going to provide a nice challenge for players to come back to and trying to get 100% in the game.
As for the innovative, was there anything new here? What's the stuff that we already seen before? As he stated, they incorporated a lot of new fixes between the original title onto the second one, and they've also added new features as well, and some of these features actually happen to tend to be towards the combat section of the game. And a cool thing about these new features is that you could actually disable it if you don't like it, or you could choose to kind of switch it on and off if you want to use it at times or you don't, which is a really cool option for the game. Now, in the end, I'm actually going to be giving Mugen Soul Z an 8 out of 10. The reason why an 8 is because the game tends to drag out quite a bit. I mean, true, you're going to find yourself sitting at one section for probably two or three hours trying to level up your characters, and you're going to be doing that a lot throughout the game, which, you know, tends to kind of get boring after a while because it's like you want to progress further into the game, but you're stuck sitting on a planet trying to level up your characters for a good three to four hours. And sometimes the characters will take a while to level up because the enemies, you know, start to offer you less experience the more you level up. And knowing that you're about to have an upcoming boss fight, but you need to keep improving your health stats. And the other down aspect is that the story aspect I would say tends to drag out. I mean in terms of dialogue wise you have sections which are important to the main story and then you have other times where most of the information that's been given to you is pretty well pointless. What I mean is like going onto a tour, listening to someone give you information, but a lot of the information doesn't relate to the item at hand or is pretty much pointless. I mean you don't really need it, you could easily cut that out. Now true in terms of the dialogue in the game, you could easily choose to skip everything, but at the same time you don't know during the dialogue if there's going to be some type of information related to the main story. A lot of times it's just pretty much useless, something you could cut out. Um, but a lot of times in the game, you're going to find yourself sitting there for an hour, even an hour and a half, reading dialogue. Or a mixture of reading and listening to the dialogue as well. And it just tends to drag out quite a bit, which is why this game takes many hours to complete. Just sitting there trying to level up for a while, and then pointless dialogue that does not really need to be implemented. I mean, true, you could add some of that. I mean, I don't mind for like character development and whatnot. But just a lot of it just doesn't really relate to anything. Um, but anyways, that's my pretty much only complaints. I mean, the gameplay is really enjoyable once you get the hang in terms of how the combat system works, the crafting, and all that. Uh, but in the end, I'm going to be giving the game an 8 out of 10. If you guys would like to check out some gameplay, you guys can check the link down below. Anyways, I'm Sir James from Gamer Fusion, And remember guys, Gamer Fusion empowers your gaming.